Looking at Jared, you would think he's a regular young man who loves his job and family. But the reality is, it's an absolute miracle he's walking, talking, even breathing at all after enduring the horrors of one fateful day back in 2006. I was told I was brain dead and I was told I would not be anything but someone to be in a young age nursing home and be in a wheelchair. My brain injury restricts the simple things we often take for granted in life. I can't shave myself, otherwise I would look like Swiss cheese. I can't simply butter the toast without help. I need to drink my beer with a straw. Now that is simply embarrassing. Just think, how would these things make you feel? Growing up in the northwest of Sydney, Jared and his family, the Ingrams, were your typical close-knit Aussie family. Jared loved his sport, cars, and from a very young age, he knew exactly what he wanted to be when he grew up. From probably the age of four, I always wanted to be a plumber. I worked for my dad, and my hope was to eventually take over his business. As he got older, he got very keen on sport, a little bit cheeky, a little bit smart like all kids do, but he was always good fun, good honest boy. But then as he started to get to about 18 or 9, he just could do that little bit of, as boys do, get that little bit of recklessness in them and, you know, I'm, I'm greater, oh, nothing will happen to me, sort of thing. Let's talk about that day. Can you just tell me the, the lead up to that? Well, I was you know, driving out the driveway, it was light rain, um, on my way to my sister's. I was coming down, I lost control, I went to the wrong side of the road, clipped the front of my ute, clipped the telegraph pole, and then I spun around and hit into a tree. And then two minutes after that, the airbag deployed, which in turn suffocated me. My daughter, she rang and she said, where's Jared? And I said, He's, he left ages ago. And she said, he hasn't arrived. I said, well, that's not right. So she rang all his friends. We rang everyone we knew. And then so she sent a husband. She said, can you just drive, drive over to Mum's to see there? And of course, he drove about two kilometres down the road and the road was closed off. The helicopter was there. He saw his car completely wrapped around a tree. Neil went up to the helicopter. I just couldn't go. Oh, probably about 20 minutes later they came out and they said we have no brain function at all so he's probably clinically dead how does that make you feel as parents of you know it's it... look even now that's still tough because yeah. Diane I've n never ever seen anybody she just crumbled on the floor and sobbed and sobbed with her hands down for a long, long time. Even yep. it's been many years, but it's still... It's still very raw. Yeah. And basically I had a lot of guilt for a long while about the accident because it was my car and the fact that it was in the rain, I think they estimated it was doing about 140 k's an hour. Despite the odds being stacked heavily against him, Jared's determination to live a meaningful life never wavered. And with the unconditional support of his family, after seven grueling months, Jared managed to defy the doctor's predictions and walk out of the hospital. So why was your recovery so positive? It's, it's vital to have people that you love and that you feel connected to, especially in your recovery, because then they can motivate, encourage you, give you something to strive for. Um, they can say things to you which go, you know what, I'm not meant to be forever in a wheelchair. I'm not meant to be in a hospital forever. I want to actually get myself out of here 
and start a new life. You get to make a lot of stuff with Jared. Jared yep, when you I can't. do. Yes, obviously I do. he is great at the uh, at the at coffee. The coffee. Yep. Yes, he can. He can do that, but, but he can't quite. Um, it's, it's small things right. like it might be, um, you know, like um, it, cutting the tomatoes, yeah. and uh, he can't. He hasn't got those those skills that he'd be able to to do that sort of stuff. So, you we have to make his sandwiches or. We leave them sometimes um, cut in the fridge. Certain things he can do, but um, sandwiches and um, food, even with, um, like he couldn't carry it from one plate or if he goes to a restaurant or he goes to a, um, a club, he can't carry the food. Someone has to carry, or a smorgasbord, he can't do um, those sorts of stuff. Thank you, doke, mate. Yep, there's your lunch, darling. Ta-da! Ta-da! There you go. Okay, there you go, buddy. Don't stand around him when he's having chips with tomato sauce, because you'll <laughs> you'll wear it. Yeah. In addition to his physical limitations, Jared also had to cope with being abandoned by his friends. I think it was pretty tough because it's very confronting, probably for his mates that he he'd been with, um, but they just didn't seem to. I think their way, I'm assuming that they dealt with it, was they just faded off. They're too busy moving on, and it's probably only in later years they'll look back and go, wow, look what I did, I left him. If we rewind back to before 2006, what was your experience or what was your attitude towards disabled people? Not like it is now. I'm completely different and I mean that was that was a real rude awakening for me and I felt so bad about that I just felt that was something that really got to me that I did not realize what people with disabilities were like I was so embarrassed that I had those thoughts that's how I was you know, uh, and you know, I had to go and actually seek counselling for that because I felt so bad about it. That I wow. felt so bad that I'd sort of not written off disabled people, but I, I did. Dismissed them. Yeah, I did. I dismissed them. Yeah. Like so many people with disabilities, Jared faced discrimination and rejection for years when he tried to return to the workforce. Then he discovered Nova Employment, who helped make his dream a reality. I understand the period of time that goes past between accident and getting yourself in a position where you feel confident enough I mean, and you've got sufficient courage, and Jared has both, to have a go. So the RSL were willing to give us a go and we had the candidate and together we made sure that Jared's employment was a success. The, the decision to employ Jared at the club here was uh, a, a pretty easy one from the first time I sat down and met him. I was, I was intrigued by his, his story. I was uh, really taken by his motivation and his drive to get back into the workforce. And his personality was one that I felt would really fit well with that front door position. And he was able to take that role on board and, and from, from day dot. And he, he's reaffirmed my faith in him doing that job by doing an outstanding role there for the last you know, 18 months. He has this determination of purpose that, that it is and remains inspirational. So much it would have been so easy to go, I give up. And I think that must be the course that many follow because so many people in his life were equally prepared to go, oh well, you don't have to bother now. But he did and he does and I hope he always will. So tell me now, you're a motivational speaker. Yeah. Why did you choose to do that? I guess because I wanted to tell other people about what they could experience if they make a dumb choice on our own or make something where they're not, their mind isn't actually on the job, like their, their mind is elsewhere and they're not really thinking about it, they're just having a good time. Yeah, it's given me like a, a sense of a purpose, I guess, a purpose now to 
help others. You have your life ahead of you. Your destiny is yet to be complete. Don't waste this opportunity you have, unlike what I did. So thank you, and please stay safe. There's three simple words that when it comes to the gym gives me the strength to push through and they, that is ability is what you're capable of doing, motivation determines what you do and attitude determines how well you do it. That is really inspiring and I love that quote, especially at the gym.